Hello, hello friends. This is Grace here, getting ready to do a sweet little fall project with you. And I've got this adorable set. Um, where did I put the packaging? I want to show you what it is, what it's called. Hang tight, folks. I'll find it eventually. Hello, hello, and welcome everybody to the Essential Stencil page. Let me see. Got to make sure that's where I am. Make sure I'm in the right place. And if I'm not, I got to hang it up and we got to start again. But let's see what we got. Say hello when you come on. <laughs> Let me know where I'm live because I'm not sure about Facebook tonight. Let's see. Hmm. Where am I? <laughs> where in where in the remember that where in the world is Carmen San Diego book? Was it a book or a show? Where in the world is Grace Kurtz tonight? Is she live on Essential Stencil? Hey, Jennifer. Cindy's here. She knows where she is. Kimberly's here. Hey, Kimberly. Hey. Somebody um, posted something today in uh, one of the creative groups that I belong in. And it was so cute because she spelled like, hey, hey, friends, but she spelled it H-A-Y, H-A-Y. And I was like, wait a minute. And then I thought, duh, she's doing something fall. It makes all the sense in the world. So I thought, oh, that was super creative and adorable. All right, let's see. Where am I, you guys? There's Marsha text BFF. Hello, Miss Marsha. Am I in the right place, you guys? I am. Oh, good. I'm on the Essential Stencil page. You are on the Essential Stencil page. Some of my crafty chicks from the Comfy Nest are here. You're all welcome to join me over there on my page. But I'm here every Thursday doing a live demo for Essential Stencil. There's Carol saying hello from Southwest Michigan. And Debbie is here. Look at this. Jamie's here from California. Oh, my sister's here. Kathy from Florida. Hello, hello. There's Donna. All right, folks. Now that I know I'm where I'm supposed to be, a couple of things. There will be three sets of stencils given away live tonight, so make sure you stick around. Stick around and make sure that you say hello because the way that they choose the names, Essential Stencil staff is here on hand tonight. Hello, everybody. Um, and they will choose names randomly from the comments, so make sure you comment. A lot. <laughs> you can tell me anything. Tell me what your weather is. Tell me where you're coming in from. Tell me your name. Tell me, is fall your favorite? What's your favorite season? Hey, Winnie. Hello in Indiana. And there's Liz in Illinois. I'm going to be using this set. Oh, hold on, girls. I just got to take a brief pause. Where is my paper? Here it is. I had to find the, the um, packaging for you. This is the set that I'm going to use. Okay, I'm only using one three, but it's all the fall feels. This set is really modern. I think it's really modern. I think it's really darling. The fonts are beautiful. It has three different phrases. Let's look at them. Hello, Autumn. And, you know, we say hello, fall a lot, but some people like to use the word autumn, so I love that they've added this hello autumn, and I love, love, love all this, how the letters, the scrolls of the letters work into the graphics around it, so they connect with the leaves, and I just think that's darling, See, and I love all these scroll leaves that kind of make the frame. I think that's the one I'm going to use. Okay, so we got that one. This comes in the set, all the fall feels, and look at the really pretty fonts, you guys with the leaves blowing around and the pumpkin, of course, the pumpkin. And then the set also comes with, it's, it's correct, <laughs> it's not backwards. I held it up backwards. Well, actually, I held it up the right way, but for you, it's backwards, so I fixed it. Fall is in the air. <laughs> Sorry about that. Fall is in the air, and we got the pumpkin. And again, the scrollies, I love the scrollies in the fall, like the leaves just flying around. The fonts are just beautiful. Anyway. This is the set that I'm using. It's called All the Fall Feels. You get all three sets of stencils. Super cute. Super de duper. -de. We are going to put it. Okay, so these stencils are 7 inches by 16 inches. But I'm going to put it on this. This is 12 inches by 5. This is a 5 by 12. Oh, we're going to fit it on here. I know it'll fit. I just know it. I already checked. Hey, Janice. Aren't they gorgeous? Tracy, they're so pretty. I love this set. It's so, like, it's darling. It's just darling, and it has three little fun fall phrases. I do too, darling. She says love. She loves fall. Oh, thank, thanks, Donna. She says she loves fall. Who else loves fall? And tell us, I asked this on my own page, because I'm curious. What are your favorite things about fall? 
you know, some people love the pumpkin spice comes out like everywhere. You can get pumpkin, pumpkin spice, everything. What did I get the other day? I bought some cinnamon rolls the other day from Walmart. My kids love those little minis and I don't buy them that often. I really don't. They were pumpkin spiced. I got them home and I'm like, whoa, what, what does that say? Pumpkin spiced. Thank you, Debbie. She says she loves my earrings. Thank you. Hey there, Liz. She loves fall. Linda loves fall. Wish we could skip winter and go straight to spring. <laughs> Where do you live, Liz? Because here in North Dakota, oh my Lord, it gets cold. All right, I'm going to paint this black before I do anything with it. I want a black base on this. Um, so I'm going to paint it black first. I just got some regular apple barrel paint here. I'm going to slab it on and we're going to get going. Oh, you know what I was thinking though? I thought these would be really cute on there. Do you know those little, like, little half beads? I have really big ones and I have really little ones. I don't have like in between, watch. I'll show you. I got the big honkers. These ones are like one inch big. And I got the really little ones. And I think I, the, because it's a little sign, we gotta go with the little ones. Look at the difference. Look at how big those are. And then look at how little these are. I've got four of them in my hand. All right, we're gonna glue these on first and then we're gonna paint, okay? That's the plan. But what I was thinking, I gotta check just to make sure. This is gonna go here, it's gonna fit perfectly on here. And then I think I'm gonna stick these four things, these four little half beads on the edges. I'm just gonna use my art glitter glue because it works real well. I don't even have, I better turn on my, it's not on my hot glue gun, but I'm gonna turn it on just in case I need it. We're gonna stick these on here. Hey Debbie Ellis in Texas, who else is here? Make sure you guys say hello. These are just like, you know, little grommets, right? Like, so if you like decorative little accents, I don't have any, I don't think I have any like wood, like little wooden cutout of leaves or anything like that. Cause that would be super cute. How did I get blue on here? The little chip of blue paint. I'm eyeballing it because I'm not a measurer. I'm just going to make these little blue or <laughs> blue, these little decorative half beads on here. They're um, just naturally wood colored. The board itself is white, like a white palette board. I'm just gonna put them on here and we're gonna paint the whole thing black. Um, I got a little glue, glue overage, which you know I don't like. I don't like when glue oozes out from underneath anything. So we're gonna use, I'm gonna use my trusty little X-Acto knife to get that extra glue off. So see what I'm doing? I'm just putting these little and I'm just going to do four of them just to add a little dimension. I'm also going to be using some ribbon later, um, maybe some beads, some more wood beads. I don't know. You guys can help me decide. I, you know, I kind of make it up as I go sometimes. I have an idea in my head, but what will really happen, it's anyone's guess. <laughs> Anyone knows. You know, you really could use the grid lines on your table if you have one to measure. Like I'm at a half inch. This one could go over just a tish. This one's at a half inch. That one's at half inch. Um... When I say half inch, I mean a half inch to this square where this is lined up, where this is lined up. It's in the half, it's at the half inch point. So if you really wanted to be like super straight about it, you could do that, but that's just not me. It's just not how I roll. I just wing it, you guys. Listen, I'm all about crafting for the fun of it. Um, listen, my lights are gonna give me trouble. See, so I just have those little four things glued on there. We are gonna paint black now. Let me cover my glue. Before I forget, I'm gonna clean the little tip off. Hello, Shannon in Ohio. Hello, hello. I just ordered a few different sizes. Um, Susan, where did you order them from? Because I think I need more. I mean, obviously I need more of them because I only have the two sizes and that just can't be. I don't think I wanna use this brush. Mm -mm. No, I do not. Let's see. I got all kinds of brushes. Let's use this one. This is soft. Okay, we're going right in. I'm not even using a, <laughs> I, I should, oh gosh, my little paint surface for my paints, I think it's, I think it's in my laundry room being cleaned. I don't know, we'll have to find out later. All right, we're just gonna slab some white paint on, or black paint on this white board, and I want it to look rustic, so on the edges, I'm not gonna go too crazy with getting the edges completely covered, because I wanna sand it back anyway. So let's get the middle covered where we're gonna put the design. And you see that little bit of paint, how far it's going? Do you see that? Look at, this is a 12 inch board. 
Now I have usually close, oh, there's, <laughs> there's my, uh, my little, I'm gonna need this later for my paint. I'm looking now for, I moved things around again, you guys, here they are. My little, my little boards to protect my table. I have these like little chunks of wood. Do you guys do this where you just can stick them under there just to make sure you don't get any? I mean, I don't usually get all precious about it, but since I'm trying to be kind of uh, kind to my table, I really honestly need a new um, craft mat. Mine's getting pretty worn out. I clean it a lot. Once I get paint on it, which does happen, once I get paint on it, then I clean it with a magic eraser. And now I've done that so often that the lines and the numbers are coming off of it. So I, I, I think it's time to update soon. But I do love the cutting mats as a table. Okay, I gotta get these buttons. I want them black. I'm gonna glue it all the way around them. And I, I'm going for rustic, so it doesn't matter to me doesn't really matter to me if they're like total coverage. All right, here we go. The, now around the buttons, you just want to wiggle your brush around and make sure you get it like around the edges. So it really does look like it's cohesive and it's all one big thing instead of you put them on afterwards kind of thing. See how messy I'm being? It's just easy breezy. I like a board like that, says Sandra. It's five by 12, it's really thin, it's a palette board. So it does have some um, coloring to it. It's not just a white board, it does, it's a palette board. And I think they're sold in sets of two. So if anybody needs to know where I get them, you can private message me or just go over to the company. Go ask me in the uh, Crafty Chicks Club. That's my free craft community. I know many of you are members. You can ask me in there and I'll post the link or I'll just try to remember to do that tonight. All right, we got a lot of it covered. Let's give it a drying. The really important thing right now is to make sure that those buttons get covered well and around them because like I said, you don't want to look, you don't want it to look like you put on the buttons after you painted. Okay, let's dry that a quick dry. And I can check comments. Hey, Mitzi in West Virginia, hello, hello. Barbara used half inch wood beads around a mirror yesterday. Oh, Sandra, I'm sure I got the buttons from Amazon and the board, if you private message me, I can send you a link where I got the board, okay? Because I do have them available um, and I can sure share with you. There we go. Almost completely dry. That's quick and easy. Apple barrel paint. It's really thin, so it dries real fast. It's almost completely dry. I want to sand it back just a little around the edges because I want it to look really, you know, rustic. So I want the edges to pop white. See that? Like, so I want the edges to be white consistently. It kind of gives it like a nice little frame. So I'm gonna come around. I'm not gonna to touch the buttons, I don't think. I just wanna to touch the edges with a little bit of the sanding block. It's another thing, this, these little wood chunks underneath your project, it really does help elevate it off the table so that you can do something like this easily because it gives you a couple of inches to work with. I just ordered myself, you guys, a Lazy Susan so that I can spin my projects around on the Lazy Susan. Now, it would be easier if I just did this with my finger because there's really apple barrel. There's not really a whole lot to sand off here. Yeah. Okay, so what I really want it to do is to give it a frame all the way around. And right here, I don't like the way this looks. The way I painted it, it looks like I missed a spot on purpose in a semicircle which I don't like. <laughs> that was fast. That, that just dried up right away. Okay. I'm gonna take that in a little further. All right, see what we got. Like, and I like this. I like that it's kind of ruddy. And those, the little beads, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. You know, and do you know you can finger, you can um, wet distress with your finger? So if you grab, like, let's grab 
a new shop towel. And if I wet this, I'm gonna grab my little water bottle. If I wet this a little bit, just wet your finger with a shop towel, a soft like rag, it doesn't have to be a paper towel. Um, and then you come in and you, you just, you do the same thing you do with a sanding block, except you do it with your finger. It's gonna take off your acrylic or chalk paints so that you can distress and it gives you more control like you can control where you're taking the paint off and it's not that big sandy mess. So if the sand makes you sneeze or it just drives you crazy that you get all that stuff all over the place, you can easily come in. Like I'll do it right here and show you. If we come in here and I just, you can take off as much as you want or as little as you want to give yourself the paint Know the paint job that you want. Now, I don't like that. I'm going to fix that. I only did that so I could show it to you. <laughs> I don't really want that big white spot right there. So I'm going to come in with my paintbrush, which is practically dry already, and hit that up again. And I don't mind if it's a little, like a little bit off because I want it to be rustic looking. I am right in here. I'm going to add a little more. That's where I was wet distressing to show you that you can do that if you didn't know that. I like the vintage look too. Karen, Karen says, I like the distressed vintage look. I'm with you, sister. And lately I've really been a fan of this black background. I did a project yesterday that I'm, I sold it immediately. It was actually a fundraising it. You know, somebody made a, a donation and purchased it by making a donation immediately. And I, I, after it was done, all said and done, the live was all said and done. I was like, oh, I want to keep this for myself. It, it came out. I love the black and white together. I just love it. Okay. Hello, Autumn. Hello, Autumn. Does anybody prefer the word autumn over fall? This is just going to fit. Now that my button's on there, it's going to give me a little bit of trouble, actually. I should have done the buttons afterwards, but that's okay. We will make it work. I can actually, you know, because you can move this around, you can put your letters wherever the heck you want. I'm trying to decide. I think I want to leave enough room for some of the swirlies. I don't mind if I lose the pumpkin, actually, but I really like the swirlies. If I do that, that will fit perfectly there. And then I'm going to have to move the hello over a tish. Yeah, like that. That would work. That would work. So I, because of the little buttons, you know, it's raising up my stencil on either side. I'm going to have to do the hello first, let it dry, and then move the autumn in a little bit and do that second. Now, to decide color. Okay, this all started because I have this really cute fabric. And actually, do you want to see something kind of funny? It's, it's like a failed project. So I've been in here in my craft room for like a half hour actually more than that because I started this earlier today it all started with the fabric this fabric because it's so stinking cute let me show you close up it's just a fat quarter from Walmart I don't I think I got it last year I didn't even get it this year it's just been in my fabric stash so I grabbed like all these fall fabrics because I thought it'd be really cute to make like I like those raggy um um messy bows made with straps uh, scraps of fabric so that's how it all started the hello this whole set all the fall feels like it's perfect for fall so fall fabrics fall feels um here's what i started with i wasn't going to show you this but let me do it <laughs> i started with this this is what i wanted to do this little banner came from the dollar tree it's so stinking it really is so stinking cute on its own it's so stinking cute but I thought I'm gonna double side it and I will do the other side. Do so you wanna see the failed project? This isn't quite failed. I, I shouldn't say it's quite failed, but here's what happened. This is, I love teaching you guys. So this is like teachable moments. I hold on to this stuff for this reason. And I have swatches. You, I do swatches all the time. When I do in my craft memberships, we do swatches all the time. So we can test different, like this is all different gold sparkle products. So I test them, I note them, I show them the differences in colors and shine, um, all that jazz, like uh, how opaque are they, all that stuff, because I'm, I'm like big into like experimenting. So I started out, I wanted this to be a soft gray. 
So this was the first swipe that I did. You can see right here, this line, see where that line is? This is the first swipe that I did with a, a, a light gray chalk paint. Well, the brown is coming through, so it looks like, it almost looks like cement, which I really don't mind actually, but the brown is coming through and it's coming through as like a reddish brown. Didn't like it. So I said, I'll prime it. I'm gonna go get my gesso and prime it. So this, all of this stuff that you see on this side that's darker, I primed it twice with white gesso and then I went over it with the gray twice. So I've been in here for a while. So this whole section has two coats of primer and then two coats of the light gray. I still didn't like it because the reddish brown was still coming through. So I thought, okay, I'll just get a darker gray and put it on the top and see what it looks like. That's what that is. Still don't like it. And here's why I didn't like it for a stencil project. Hello in Southern California, Dee Dee. Hello, hello. I love, I actually love the look of this as a background. I think it's really pretty. It, it reminds me of cement or stucco because I was stippling the paint on. I was stippling it with that big brush. Um, where did I put it? This one with like big wide bristles. So I love the look of it. Here's where I was thinking, I'm not gonna be able to stencil on that because I wanted to come on with either this creamy orange color, which you guys know I love, or like a mustardy yellow on top. And I'm just, I was just afraid because that felt, the brown felt was changing the colors of the paint on top that I wasn't gonna get orange or yellow. I was gonna get, I don't know what, like another muddy color that wouldn't be bright and vibrant. So I gave up on the, the pennant banner from the Dollar Tree. And I went to my little wooden board because it's just safe, right? So teachable moment right there. If you're not sure, test it ahead of time. That banner will not go to waste. It'll get used for something. It's just not an appropriate banner for stenciling with other acrylic paints and um, or chalk paints. It just I just know it won't work, so I, I put it aside. We put it aside for a while. Hey, Cindy Berry from Illinois, thanks for being here. Good night, Miss Tracy. She's going to bed. <laughs> I'll see you, in the, see you in the morning. You could, Maggie. So that's what I was thinking. You could, I was gonna, like, you, you could put a decorative fabric. You could put paper over the top of it. There's so many things you could do with it, with glue, or you could stitch paper on top of it and do something on that. I just thought, you know what? I don't want, I already have like 40 minutes into that dang banner. And I thought, I just don't want to chance it not working on the live and then would be stuck with it not being very vibrant, so. It does look like a textured snow product, Bonnie. Kind of agree with you. This orange color is called Annie Sloan's Barcelona. It's Annie Sloan chalk paint in Barcelona. Oh, I love this orange, it's so beautiful. Um, thanks, Sandra. Everybody's saying love your earrings, thank you. They, they are actually like, they have like a fur hide texture. I don't even know where I got them, I'm sorry. I can't tell you. I have no idea. <laughs> I think I got them locally. Hey, Susan, it's Annie Sloan chalk paint in the color Barcelona. So you'd have to find an Annie Sloan stockist to grab it. You can find them online. I, I order from the Purple Painted Lady in New York because I love her. Okay, here we go. We're going to do it orange or yellow. I think I'm going to go, I think I actually think I'm going to go white. Oh, to help me decide in the comments. What should I do the letters in? Orange, yellow, or white? I don't know. I kind of like white, but the yellow would be very pretty. Like this one of these mustardy yellow colors. Um, one is called King's Gold from Apple Barrel, and the other one is called Turner's Yellow from Folk Art. They're very similar. One is a little brighter. I think I'd go with the warmer color. Maybe I should do it in the yellow because everything was based on this. This, like I'm trying to go with this, like as some accent later in the, in the, oh, see, white. You guys are saying white, orange. Kathy, Annie Sloan is my favorite for furniture painting, but I don't really use it to craft with because it's so expensive. Um, but I do really love it. It is fantastic and beautiful. Uh, I got these from Walmart, uh, excuse me from Amazon, they're in my Amazon store. These paint bottles, put the paint in this side, you squeeze it out. It's like a ketchup bottle from a restaurant store. 
Like that's basically what it is. Or I should say like a dressing bottle because you could put anything you want in there. Orange D says, Denise says orange, okay. Marsha says white. Hey, Paula Shoe, there's my girly. Um, she's saying orange, do ombre. Oh, Debbie. Brenda says yellow. Hey, Penny, welcome, welcome. Susan says orange. Sandra says yellow. Well, if I do the yellow, we could add the orange. Um, we can make the leaves. You know what? Let's do white, and then we can make the leaves orange and yellow ombre. Like, we can mix them orange and yellow. How's that sound? It's like a nice compromise. I think the white is going to really pop, and I think... Well, I know because the board itself, like the edges of the board are white, that I think that would look really nice. So let's do white. It's gonna really pop off of here. The base color of this fabric is white, but then it has some orange and like a tannish yellow in there. So we can make it all work. Listen, we can do it all girls, guys and girls, we can do it all. All right, let's see. I gotta push it down really hard because my little buttons are in the way now. Note to self, I should have stenciled first. I haven't put the buttons on, but it's all right. We're going to make it work. All right, I'm putting some paint in my little paint thing here. I don't need a lot. This is a small project. We do not need a lot of paint, but you need a good stencil brush. I use the Essential Stencil Brushes. It comes with a set of four. Let's see if I can find them all, ladies. Can we find them all? That I have all my brushes in this, all my stencil type brushes. In this container, I see the last one. It's on the way bottom, a little stinker. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. Get out of my way, other ones. Okay, set of four. These are the four stencil brushes that you get when you buy a set from Essential Stencil. Now, if you're gonna go shopping on the EssentialStencil.com website, please use an ambassador code. You'll get 10% off. We also get a commission. So um, if you use my code, the comfy nest, I would so appreciate it. But this is what you get, four different sizes. I'm just gonna use the small one. These are skinny little letters. It's not a big project. Um, I love that they have these rounded tips and I love that they're nubby. I do not like, I actually do not like um, stencil or any brushes that have really long handles. It's just my preference. So you do you, but these are fantastic brushes. I'm getting a little bit of paint from one and I'm using a dry um, spot to work that paint up into the bristles. You want it to look dry. You do not want it to be drippy or oozing with paint when you're stenciling. And I wanna get that paint up into the bristles. That's why I use a dry spot in little circles and you just work that paint up into those bristles and it holds it really nicely and then it will deposit it on your project. Okay, here we go. I'm just going in. I don't even know how straight I am. I don't, I don't even know, but you know me. I don't get worked up about stuff like that. I'm gonna do the letters in white. It's gonna be bright. It's gonna be beautiful just cause we say so. And then when I'm done with that, we're gonna add the scrollies and the leaves all the way around, like all over the place in the yellow and the orange. I, I thought about using metallic gold, but I think I'll use the yellow and the orange. You guys, like a lot of you voted for those two colors and they are quite beautiful. They'll be beautiful together on, on those leaves. All right, so I'm just stippling this in. That means this up and down, it's kind of like a needle in a sewing machine, up and down. You know, I was watching, who was I watching? Sharon does a beautiful job. She swirls. She does a beautiful job. Amanda swirls. She does a beautiful job. A lot of times I do stipple. Sometimes I swirl. You can. I like the look of the paint when it's stippled on because it gives it a textured stucco look almost. And I like that look. I like the, the variance of the way the color comes out. It's not smooth. It's textured. So if you're a fan of that, then stippling might be your way to go. If you like it to look super smooth, you might want to be doing the little circles. All right, I'm just going to do the letters and I'm going to leave um, the leaves and the swirlies for now. So I went over a little bit on the lines, but that's okay. Like where the leaf is, because these things, these, these elements are so close to each other. So like when I say I went over the line, like right there where the H and this swirly meet, I went over the line a little bit there and then right here where this leaf is, but it's okay. It's just a little bit of white. 
that is a really pretty pretty font and you know what when you do it when you have a white board you paint it black and then you put white stenciling on top it almost looks like the black was put on like the black part was the painted part around the hello stencil as opposed to putting a white stencil on top it's I don't know it looks like it's part of the original board all right let's dry this now it's totally your call I almost never paint my bridges almost never I almost never paint them it just doesn't even occur to me it doesn't bother me um, and what I mean by bridges like from here you cannot see them at all but if I hold it really close you'll see the breaks um, let me get my use this as a pointer you see the breaks like right there there's a break right there there's a break like everywhere there's a bridge that little line that holds the stencil together everywhere where there's a little plastic bridge right there it leaves lines on your project now they don't bother me in the least i don't mind them at all some people really like to paint them in so what you would do is you would get a little detail brush like a little tiniest the littlest one you can get this one's actually really bigger than i intended to show you but just for the sake of time and you go in with your white paint and you just fill them in that's all you have to do i almost never do that it just isn't it's just not something i worry about <laughs> but if, it, if it's important to you you do you as i always say all right, I want to make sure this is dry. Man, those heating tools really help for that. Before we put the stencil down, because it is definitely going to hit on there. And I want to make sure that this is dry, the back of this. That there's no wet paint. Because once I put this down and I start moving around, it's going to um, smudge if I'm not careful. Now, my A is going to hit. I can see it. It's going to hit the end of my O. Doesn't bother me in the least. I'm gonna turn it upside down because it's just easier for me. I don't know why, but from here, this is easier for me to hit. Now, the this the the only thing I'll say, I didn't know that the hello was that straight, but the hello, like the bottom of the H is the lowest point of the of the letters, right here. And then the E, the bottom of the E is higher than the bottom of all of these letters. So the hello would be really hard to get on a horizontal straight line. This one, that's horizontally straight. Do you see? The autumn, all of the bottom of the letters hit at the same exact place. So I'm going to use the bottom of the stencil and the bottom of my board to try to eyeball it and, and make sure that I'm straight. I, but I'm not a measurer. You could put a little line for yourself. You could put a piece of tape. I don't have, I don't even have one out. But like if you had a piece of tape, you could put that down on here and then it would give you the line that you're looking for. You guys, I wing it. It's just me, that's how I do it. I gotta turn it back around so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, I think I like it better the other way though for stenciling. I just wanna make sure I'm straight. Hold on, I, gotta, I think I gotta stand up. The other thing you can do, all right, if I move these, and I put my board straight on the straight lines of my my um, cutting mat because it has all the, the graphs, the lines. Then when I line this up here, if I make sure that the bottom of the stencil is on a straight line from the cutting board, I'll know I'm straight because now this is straight horizontally. Now all I have to do is make sure that the bottom of this is straight on my board and I'll know that my letters are straight, as long as you don't budge your board, right? It's another tip for you, just so you, cause I know it stresses some of you out. It doesn't stress me out because I've, I'm a recovering perfectionist, I call myself. Anybody else out there a recovering perfectionist? I try really hard to let go of that stuff because it takes all the fun out of it for me. Oh, Linda says so smart. I'm so glad to give you guys some tips. Yeah, Jennifer says, I wing it too. I'm not a measurer, I'm not either. Jennifer, I just go with it. My A is definitely gonna be hitting the part of my O. I don't care. <laughs> you can't, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It may actually look pretty cute. All right, I'm just going in. Cause I don't, I just don't get too worked up about this stuff, you guys. All right, here we go. Going in with the autumn and then we're gonna have plenty of room around the words on this board so that we can put some of the swirlies and we can put 
some fall leaves and all that jazz, okay? Whew, this room, with, with the lights that, <laughs> I've got lights on the table, like on the project so that you guys can see better. These lights, these ring lights and stuff, they do not bode well for a woman dealing with hot flashes. <laughs> I'm sitting like I feel like a plant underneath one of those light up tables like good lord turn the heat off it's hot in here and we we have the air conditioner on because even in North Dakota it's pretty warm this week like I think it was 70 you know for, for October sunny and 75 is beautiful I'm not complaining at all it's just warmer than we would normally expect it to be so we still have the air conditioning running at night, it doesn't run because it cools off considerably, but I know some of the folks, some of you guys, um, some crafty chicks from over at the Comfy Nest page, which you are all welcome if you are not over there following and part of that, um, our community, come on over and hang out with us there. Some of you are from Arizona and saying how hot it has been. Uh, let's see. Check the comments. Someone suggested using a piece of sandpaper underneath your board to keep it more steady. I suppose you could. Why not? It would give it a little bit of grit, right? So I guess that would work. You could also use like double-sided tape or if you were really worried about it moving around. I, I don't get, like I said, I don't get to work over that. Oh, Maggie said she's over the hot flashes. Mine have really kicked in, Maggie. <laughs> like, wow, is it strange. It's been quite the experience, this, I'd say this year, but they've really ramped up lately. Um, I know what ES is up to. I don't think I need this stencil until I see it on a live, Jarita. No, listen, it's good for us to show you guys um, a variety of ways that you guys can use not only the stencils, but, you know, now we have the new transfers, we have the brushes, there's the tags. There's so much that you could take advantage of. Um, and sometimes... A lot of times, when ladies will say, oh gosh, I already have that stencil. I wouldn't have thought to use it that way. So we're just hoping to inspire you and give you new ideas and new ways to do things. <laughs> but you're funny about that. What was I doing the other? I was watching something and I, I finally said to myself, I gotta stop. I gotta like put this away. But I was shopping for clothing, um, not, not, not um, supplies. I was looking for some new like long sleeve shirts for fall. Anybody have a store that you love? Do tell. I have to do all my shopping online. We don't have a whole lot in our town where I live. Um, okay, let's see. Here we go. We needed just a tish more paint. So I gotta get the bottom of my M and the N, and the N is the challenging part because there's my little button holding my stencil up off of the board. So let me get the top done because that part will be easy. But then the bottom part is gonna take a little finagling with my fingers. And actually the bottom of the N, I might even miss it entirely. The part closest to the, nub, to the uh, what do you call it? The little half bead. But I'll just fill it in with a paintbrush. That doesn't bother me at all. It's, 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 I'm having a little bit of a struggle here. It's close. All right. I'm not worried. I'll fig <laughs> fill in where my fingers hit and took the paint off of the board. Oh, it's super cute, you guys. Okay, so the very bottom, I'm gonna put that aside for a minute so I can just show you. Let me get that off my fingers. Huggies wipe to the rescue. Um, someone said, I love my local, what, what, what? Love black and white. I've never shopped there. I've never even, I, I haven't seen a store in North, I don't think there's one in North Dakota. There might be one in Fargo, but that's like two and a half hours for me. Um, oh, Joan, seriously, girlfriend, blessings to you. <laughs> Barbara says she doesn't miss them. <laughs> uh, Christopher and Banks. We, don't, we used to have one in our town, but it's gone. Kohl's, 90 miles away. So, I, but Kohl's, I can shop online there well. It's just with clothing you want to try it on, right? Take, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I love chilling out and chatting with you all. 
I don't know, Gail. That's a good, she's asking, will there be a Christmas transfer? I don't know. I don't know that we are not privy to that information. I'd love to know too. Mm. Mm. Whimsically nodded. She says, thank you for all the inspiration and encouragement. And then Linda right afterwards, I'm thankful for all, for all the help and tips. Well, you're welcome. All right, do you see how close I got to the nubby there? I still got the bottom of my N in, but it's really close. See how well that just pops off of there? And look, my A went right over the squiggly line for the O, but I think it's cute. So this seven by, what did I say it was? Seven inches by 16 inch stencil is fitting on a five by 12 board. So just FYI, like, you can do it, ladies. You don't have to have that specific size of a board. You're going to have to finagle a little bit, like, because you see me, like, I have to move the stencil around, but you can fit these. You could even stack the hello over the autumn if you had something shaped that way, where the hello, where is it? The hello could go straight on top of the autumn. Just move your stencil around. So fun. All right, let's get some orange and some yellow paints and let's do some swirly lines and leaves and then we'll add some ribbon. Um, sometimes I take these off to get the paint out. Oh, I feel like I need my readers. <laughs> There's like a crusty little piece of paint, like a little nub, it looks like one of those half beads actually. A little nub of paint on my squeeze bottle. Let me squeeze a little bit of this out. I just need a tish. Sometimes with this bottle, I don't my own strength and then I, I get more than a tish. All right, a little bit of Annie Sloan in orange. Move over, folks, we need room. And then let's grab, it doesn't matter which, they're very close in coloring. A little bit of yellow. And I still have just a tish of white on there, but we've got those two colors going. I'm gonna mix them and we're just gonna add like right, I'm gonna put the hello back exactly where it was on top of, oh, let's make sure we're dry first. Let's hit this quick with some air. Ooh, I don't want to budge my paint. All right, I'm hit it with some air. I think it pretty much was, but just in case. I'm going to put the hello right back on top of itself so I can get that leaf, you know, that leaf on there. So let's see if we can get accomplished that because that's really cute right on top of there. Plus, I did paint a little bit of white over that that I did not intend to paint. So that will help me cover that up. The other thing is I'm going to grab just a bit of painter's tape and I'm gonna paint over the squirrely on top of the E so that I don't get paint now on my wording, my white wording. I just wanna do the leaf and I'm gonna grab a same paintbrush. I'm not even, it's got white paint on it, but look, it's not even getting off on my finger very much. So it's gonna be very little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow and put it down. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange and put it down. I don't want to mix the two. I want both on my brush and I'm going to stipple. So if I go in circles, it'll blend it. But if I go up and down, I should get both colors. Now, if I keep going over the same spot, it's going to blend them because they're still wet. I want a little more orange. There we go. And now I'm going to grab just a little more yellow and stipple it on the top. So you'll see, I did a little more yellow on the top and then I tried to get some orange in the middle. It's very, very subtle, but that's really beautiful. The colors are very beautiful and they're going to match our little truck, our truck um, fabric, which was the original goal was to use that truck fabric. So hopefully we can work it in here. I'm going to make sure that this is dry on the back. I don't want to get any residual paint on my project and I don't wanna be held up, I wanna keep working. So now, let's see while I'm thinking, cause there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like 11 leaves on this stencil. 11 of them, that's a lot to choose from. And I wanna fit some more on here cause that is just so darn pretty. I could grab, okay, I could grab something, one of these swirlies and put it under here. But on the hello here, I don't want this one because I'm not going to fit the pumpkin. And I, this one's too small. So I'm going to grab this swirly, I think, and put it under here. Yes, I am. 
but I want the, I want the, <laughs> I want this, where is it? This swirly. I want this swirly, but I want the big leaf. And if I put it on the correct way, the big leaf is going to be on the nubby. So if I flip this over backwards, I can get that leaf coming the other way and I can just use part of the swirly and that big leaf right underneath the L. So I'm, I flipped my stencil the other way. That's why I made sure to dry this too. Because you can, you can use whatever side you want when it's not a letter. You can use whatever side of the stencil you want. If I, if I, kitty, if I just kitty corner it a little bit, I'll even get more of the scrolling on here. Because that um, little bead won't be in my way. Okay, I'm grabbing some paints. I'm going to grab some yellow. Let's do some yellow. And then I'll come back in with orange and add it on top of it. And we're gonna try to get two leaves out of the deal. Now, I have lots of yellow paint on my brush and I don't want it on there, so I'm gonna use this rag, the shop rag, and I'm gonna get off most of it because now I wanna grab some orange paint. Same brush, I'm just grabbing some orange paint and I'm gonna dab that on top of the yellow where I left some blank space, like kind of like around. Um, I didn't, I didn't, paint this in completely. I didn't paint it completely, stencil it completely. I left some of it black or raw, so I'm going in and I'm just painting that in now. It's going to be really subtle. If you want it to be more extreme, actually, you could go with a metallic paint, like a gold, or you could add some greens in here if you wanted, or reds. That would be beautiful. Let me see if I can get this swirl to go right off of the, right off of the, board yes i can but i have to push it. oh it's all bleeding darn it it's all bleeding i think because it was coming off the board a little bit darn it look it's kind of washed up i'm really tempted to just just to wipe it off let's try it <laughs> now remember i was wet distressing look oh, i'm erasing it it came too, too smudged for my taste, too smudged up. So I erased it right off of my board with a baby wipe. I'll show you, I'll show you what I got. I'll show you what I got. You guys, I make mistakes all the time and I, you can't let this stuff bother you. You just gotta go with it. I need more rags though, cause I got paint everywhere now. So let's get a new, new shop towel. All right. I erased it off. You can still see a little shadowing of it, but I'm gonna, this is gonna go right there. It's gonna go right there, I'm gonna make it. I just, I'm gonna clean this off first. So sometimes it doesn't work out the way you want it to, and that's okay. I'm gonna wipe this off very carefully. Now, when you have little bridges, those little pieces of plastic that are really skinny, so on little fine detailed projects, you get littler bridges. They're pretty um, dainty. So be careful around them. Like don't be very gentle around them. You don't wanna you don't wanna mess up your bridges. And because this is dry, it's dragging a little bit, so let's wet it. I'm gonna get the rest of that paint off and we're just gonna do that section again. I don't know what happened there, to be truthful with you. I think I just had too much paint. All right, let's try it again. I'm gonna put it right back over where it was because I want it right there. I've got my rag so I can get the paint off my brush. In fact, let's let's offload a lot of this right now. There. Okay. Whew. Here we are. Back to the beginning. No, not really. Just this part. Oh, my little blocks are my blocks. I pushed them aside and now I need them. I need I think I need to stand up to see this because if not, I need readers. Where am I? There I am. Right there. And right. There, that's right, because I went kitty wampus. I went a little kitty corner so that I could get it right off the edge. The other thing you can do, listen, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of trying to match this up, because that's what I'm trying to do, um, just paint a little black right over it. It's not, it's not the end of the world. All right, less paint on your brush. Less paint, the better, because then you avoid that dreaded bleed through. I think actually some copper, like a coppery paint would be really pretty on the tips of the leaves. 
but I don't have any on hand right now, so we're just going to skip it. All right, here we go. Try number two. And um, I really want that Barcelona color to show through. So I'm going to grab an even smaller brush like this, tiny, tiny, and I'm going to grab some orange paint on the smaller brush. Still going to like unload some of it. And I'm just going to come in and hit certain spots with a little bit of that orange. Just the orange. No yellow at all in there. Because the other brush has a little bit of both in it. There. Let's see, did we do any better? Much better. Much, much better. Gosh, you guys, that yellow and orange and then the white with it, it's just super pretty. It's super pretty all together. I'm glad we did that. We went with all three. Okay, and the other thing is, you should know, when you're doing this, you can always go in, you can use your stenciling as the base of your project. You can always go in later and with a, like a detail brush or a mark, like a paint marker or whatever you have that you want to add to. And you can add more paint, more colors. You can put glitter. Ooh, glitter would be pretty on this. Okay, we need something else up in here. Something up in here. We could fit the pumpkin girls. We could fit the pumpkin up there. Do you vote for the pumpkin or just more, more of the swirlies? What do you vote for? Um, gosh, if I did, if I did the little pumpkin with the swirly right here, I could get that leaf would go over my letter just a little bit over the letter N. That would be really cute. Should we do the pumpkin? I love watching you. Wait, let's see if I'm missing the comments. I'm missing so many comments. You said something about tips. Aw, oh, thanks, Robbie. Thanks. Yes, Kimberly, I agree with you. It makes all three colors pop. Nice save. <laughs> Connie, thanks for saying so, Connie. Um, oh, copper would be beautiful. Yes, and burgundy. Kimberly, I like the way you think. Okay. I think everything's dry, but let's grab, let's see if we can't get one pumpkin in here, the little one. And I have my little nubby there, my little nubby. So that's kind of getting in the way, but I'm just going to move. You know what I'll do? I'll do the pumpkin and the swirly, and then I'm, I'm going to continue the swirly down. It's going to go over my end a little. So I'm going to move the, the um, stencil. I'm going to put the pumpkin on, a bit of this swirly, and then we're going to move the stencil to get some more of the swirly on there. Because we can, because you can do it however you please. There's one leaf, there's one swirly. Here's, I'm doing the little pumpkin. Uh, I need more color. Let's this time go with orange as the base since we're doing a pumpkin. You know, pumpkins can be white though. Sometimes they're a little bit green in them. Now I gotta get, you gotta get, sometimes you gotta get your fingers full of paint. I, you can see that this hand is holding the stencil down because I got those half beads wanting to push the stencil up off of the board. So I'm using my fingers, which are getting full of paint. That's my, as I always say, my crafter's manicure there. So we got the, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that swirly, I'm gonna get it to come down and over the end with one of the leaves. Yeah, 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 let's paint this, or a cob, dry it. And the pumpkin is a perfect thing that you could come in with a detail brush, and I think I will add a little bit of maybe some copper or some kind of metallic, but let's get this little leaf to come down over the end just a little bit. Uh, I wanna make sure this is dry. Yes, it is. Okay, one more leaf down over. I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna turn this and get it over. Mm, how do I wanna do this? This way, maybe. I think that's dry. Now listen, don't get all wigged out. If you get a little bit of paint on something that you didn't intend to, if you've painted your background, you're just gonna go back in with your base color, so black, and dab it and get it cleaned up. It's it's not, 
Like nothing got ruined. It's not the end of the world. Maybe you need to walk away from the project for a little bit and go get a cup of tea or um, go for a little walk, go play with your dog for a few minutes just to clear your head. Sometimes you get a little frustrated and I get it. I totally get it, but don't, uh oh, way too much paint. Don't let it like cause you to give up completely. That that's just perfect. Okay, let me put this aside. Now I got paint all over my fingers. Oop, don't fall. This is what we got so far. See, so now I grabbed that leaf and I brought it down over. Now see, in your mind's eye, you can make the connection between that line and that line. I'm good leaving it, but you could come in with a little detail brush and connect the two. Okay, so we grab a little brush like this. We dip it into the paint that we were using and it doesn't matter because it's like a little bit of both. So just grab a little bit of your paints with that tiny little detail brush. And then right there where those two lines aren't matching up, you just come in and, and just draw it in if you really want it. Just come in and draw it. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Like you can make it, you can make it work however you want. Now, if you really wanted to brighten something up, like if I wanted this part, this is really, really dark orange on the side. So if I wanted to add some bright, like the brighter yellow on here, I could come in and brighten up this swirly with that bright yellow. Carry that on over here. So once you have your stenciling down, don't be afraid to go in with your paintbrushes, your glue, your glitter, like whatever else you want to add and just get creative, have fun with it. Okay, now I've got some smudges. I will show you. Let me like see what is stuck on here and what is um, actually a smudge. Well, I'm gonna grab another paintbrush because why not dirty every paintbrush that you own, right? Why not? Okay. Another paintbrush, I'm going to grab a little bit of the black that was the original color that we did because I got a couple of little smudges that I'm going to show you. Actually, I don't even need to pour any paint out. I just need a little bit on my brush right here. Now, I was see right above the M, there's those two little marks. That's because I was moving the stencil around so much, right? So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of black paint and stipple that in there, like, or brush it in really softly. So anywhere where you might have scratched something up or got a little orange where you didn't mean to, just come in. This And this is another reason why I really like distressed backgrounds because if I had painted this perfectly black solid, if I come in with a paintbrush and add even a little bit, it's gonna change the look of the paint right there. But when it's all distressed up like that and looking mucked up anyway, that's not gonna be so noticeable. Okay, let's do some sort of ribbon thing. And I'm gonna grab gold or silver. Gold or silver is the question. I'm gonna grab some rubbin buff. Rubbin buff? <laughs> is that what he wants? I'm thinking, I've got gold and I've got silver. Rub and buff. And then I'm going to put on those little beads. Um, and I'm just wondering, I think gold would look better because of all the warm colors. So I just put a little bit of this on my finger usually. Let me get it on a napkin here. It stinks to high heaven, this stuff. It stinks. It smells. I'm going to tell you it smells but it's gold and I'm gonna put it on my finger and I'm just gonna rub it over those little nubbies so because they don't really show up otherwise. See, they're not really showing up. So I'm gonna go over the nubbies with a little bit of gold and I don't want it to look too like, too precious, too perfect here. That first one that I did was really dark because it's where I had the most of the rub and buff on my finger. So now I'm not even loading up anymore. I'm just going to get all of these with a little bit of gold. And then I'm going to just take a little bit and put it on the edges of my project. Because I want it to have that, like just a little bit of gold sheen here and there. Nothing, like I said, nothing too major. And you could, you could go in with your rub and buff and your detail brush. Let's do that too. Might as well. Let me hit these edges quick and I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm just little bit of it on my finger 
and then I'm rubbing it on the edges. Not everywhere, like I'm not trying to go for a straight, straight line here. I'm just hitting it in some places on the edges. Because it's going to make those little buttons pop off of the board. And then hitting the edges is going to make it all match. So you can see it's messy looking. So you see where I rubbed it? I just rub it in here and there on the edges to brighten up the edges a little bit. Let me grab some more. Maybe I can do this backwards. See what I'm doing? I'm just adding a little bit of rub and buff here and there on the edges and on those nubbies. I call them nubbies, those half beads. But we can take our little tiny brush and get some rub and buff. Let's go over the pumpkin just a little bit. The black lines on the pumpkin. And then after this, I promise. I have so much fun with the paint. Look at, I'm even gonna put all my paint brushes in my water. On the pumpkin though, see those black lines on the pumpkin? I'm gonna fill them in with the, with the rub and buff so that the lines are now gonna be gold. They're still gonna show up. They'll still have that contrast, but the gold is gonna match what we got going on um, around the edges and on the buttons, on those half beads. So I'm gonna come in where it's black and I'm gonna fill it in with a little bit of gold. And I think I'm even gonna outline the pumpkin in gold. Like the whole pumpkin, like the outsides of the pumpkin. And it's gonna make it look more full and look more complete, I think. <laughs> but you can, you can decide. And on the bottom, there's like little bumps on the bottom of the pumpkin. I'm gonna retain that shape as much as I can with my little brush. Um, and you could, you could really, you could do the same thing with your leaves, but I just added that gold. So see, you can see that sheen there, that shine on the pumpkin. I think it's having trouble focusing. There we go. See it? And you could do the same thing wherever you want it on the whole project. But for the sake of time, let's get to the ribbons. We're going to add a little bit of ribbon. I need another wet wipe because I have orange and black and gold and rub and buff all over my fingers. And now we're gonna do something with the ribbons. Mm, so excited. The ribbon's really cute. And that's where this whole thing started was with this, not the ribbon, the, um, I'm gonna make ribbons out of it, but this fabric right here, cuteness alert. So I want it to look really shabby. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tear, if I can, and I'm gonna tear this direction because I want the trucks to show. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear down so I get a row of trucks. Okay, so I tore down so I get a row of trucks. Is it complete? Heck no, but I don't, I actually don't even need, like I don't want all of this. I just want a row, a strip of it. So I'm gonna cut it in half and we're gonna make a little like, um, a little bit of a tie for um, the hanger. I'm gonna use jute rope as the hanger. Where's my jute rope that I wanna use? Is it behind me? I'm looking, I'm looking. No, it's right here. Okay, I got my jute rope is in here. I just like, I put it in here and then I pull it out. There we go, it's, it's a new one, so it's really full. I put it in there, I got a hole in the top of this mason jar and I pull it out as I need it, which is really nice and it weighs down my jute rope. <laughs> okay, we're gonna use jute rope. And then on the jute rope, I think I'm gonna add a couple of these and then some of the ribbon. Uh, I'm calling it ribbon, but it's, we're gonna be using some of the scraps of fabric to make some ties um, on here too. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tie a couple of knots in this. This is the way I do it. You can do it however you, however you see fit, but if you get a couple of knots in your jute rope where you're gonna glue it to the back, it gives something for the glue to really hold on to, in my opinion. So I'm gonna glue this to the back of this and we're gonna put a couple of beads on it and some of the ribbon to dress it up. So we gotta get a couple of beads out. And I think I'm gonna do, I think I'll do black checkered black let's see how that looks and we can decide we're just gonna try now listen when you're beading <laughs> here's a tip for you another tip for you when you're beading 
with jute, with ribbon, um, or with um, yarn, with whatever you got, embroidery thread, inevitably the end of your thing, the rope, is gonna get all frayed and it's really hard to get that to bead through. Just put a little bit of a glue stick on your fingers, on your finger, and then roll your jute. I just keep rolling it and it's gonna become like a little needle. It's all glued together and it will not come apart on you again so that when you're threading, it's like you have a little needle on the end. Otherwise, it's really difficult. I don't know if you've noticed when you're trying to thread and that thing keeps coming apart on you, it's really frustrating. But once you get that little bit of glue on there, it's gonna help you out. Okay, so we got three beads. I'm thinking that'll look really cute hanging here. They're really dark though. You tell me what you think. I think that could, I think I should not knock things over. I think that could be really cute. Look, I think that's really cute, you guys. And then I want to add a little bit of the um, fabric somewhere. So let's get this beaded up. We're going to put six beads on here. I got to, I got to get some, twist that. I still have residual glue on my finger. I need three more beads. Black, checkered, black. And then let's see if we can add just a strip of ribbon in here to make it like really sort of a little more primitive, more rustic, all that jazz. Oh my gosh, I missed a lot of comments. You guys are chat, chat, chatting. Oh, I see a lot of comments for gold. Becky loves the beads. Oh, Lydia uses tape on the end of her string to, to you can do that too. I do find that the glue is really easy when you're using jute rope anyway. I find it to be very easy. Okay, I gotta get these six beads. It doesn't matter like that they're all gonna be in the middle here. I've gotta get the six beads threaded on this because this is my hanger. We'll put them in position in a minute. I've gotta get the big ties on the end, like my, my knots, because that's where I'm gonna glue it on. So I tie it like twice, so I get a nice big knot there, and I, I don't pull it really tight. I want it to be substantial so that my glue has something to stick to. I don't know, that's just the way I think about it. Now here, I don't usually measure, I, don't, I just don't, but if you wanted to measure, Again, this is where your table could come in handy. Put your board down, you line it up on the edges. If you wanted to measure where your bead of glue goes, now you can use your table. Every block is an inch. So you can go one inch in, you can go an inch and a half in, you can go as far as you want, as wide as you want. I'm gonna go on the one inch mark on both sides, that way I know I'm level. And I'm just gonna put a bead of glue on the board and then I use a little silicone tool. You could use anything that you have on hand. So if you have um, your X-Acto knife, I push, the, push this into the glue and then I take this and I spread the glue while it's still hot. I spread it so that it hits more of that jute rope all around. And that's really got more to hold on to. There, because the back, it doesn't really matter what the back looks like. It's, nobody's going to see it. So if it gets a little messy. So now these three beads are going to go down here. Now, again, if I go on the one inch mark with my hot glue gun, that's going to be right here. And I eyeball it. I don't really care where that glue sits because nobody's going to see if it's completely in line with that one horizontally. And then I push, push the knot into the glue and I use my silicone tool to just spread that out, that glue, all around that knot so that it, it flattens out and it sits inside that glue. And you do need to leave that, let that cool. So we've got these two, now it's the strips of, the strip of ribbon. This is gonna be way too wide. We're gonna lose our little trucks that I wanted so badly. They're gonna be way too wide for this project. So let's try to strip them down. So you put a little bit of a notch and then you pull and then you're going to get these really ratty pieces of um, fabric, which are so fun to dress up your projects with. This has a black and white checker on the back of the, of the fabric. So it actually matches really well with our black and white beads. And what I was thinking I would do, you're not going to see the trucks at all because they're so thin. But what I was thinking I would do is just tie a couple of these on here as like, like primitive scrappy. Does anybody out there like primitive? You know those primitive scrappy um, banners that you can make with ribbon? It kind of reminds me of that. 
and this has black, it has gray, it has a little bit of tan, it has a little bit of orange in it, you know, with the trucks. So you're getting a little bit of those colors peeking through. And then let's see if I have one more fabric. I was kind of thinking like a golden color fabric. Like I have this golden yellow. That might be great for this, yes. I like the torn edge of the, I like when it looks all ratty like that and all stringy. I just think it looks cute. Who else likes primitive? I don't, I don't like like uber, uber primitive, like plaid everywhere, but uh, maybe add a small staple to what, Liz? <laughs> Maggie likes that look. Good. I'm glad. So you can, you can make this as bold or as little as you want. You could taper them. Like if you wanted to do a piece of fabric, a bead, a piece of fabric, a bead, you could do that. You could put a tassel. Listen, folks, whatever your little heart and, and mind can imagine and whatever makes it happy is what you would do here on these parts. But I kind of like the idea. It's not a full messy bow. It's just a couple of little pieces of fabric to dangle down now. The part is getting them to like stick, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna have to hold this up and you wanna pull the tails of your ribbon forward. Like I want this stuff to hang down. That's the whole point of it. There's no sense of it being there and then hanging toward the back. So we're gonna pull on the fabric until it comes forward. If it would play nice, it actually would be easier if I put it down on the board. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna pull, 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 pull. I want them to hang down and forward. And if you have to, don't be afraid. First, you tell the ribbon, like you're not the boss of me. Um, it's okay to glue it down. If you gotta put a little bead of glue because your fabric is being so like stubborn and it's not moving for you, Heck, friend, like, see, this one wants to go way up. I want you to go down. It wants to go up. I'm not fighting with it. I, I got myself a glue gun, girlfriend. I put a little bead of glue anywhere down here. Actually, it went on top of the other, the other ribbon, and I'm just going to push it. I'm not going to, like, flatten it out, but I'm just going to tap it so that it hits that so it stays down, and it's actually staying on the other black and white. <laughs> Right, so don't be afraid to use, you could use a temporary glue dot. You don't even have to use your permanent glue. But I just think those little pieces of ribbon are so darling. And I love that they're kind of ratted out. So it's not a full messy bow, it's just a little bit. And you could take that off. Like if you wanted to change the color out and do some more orange or something else, you could change that out. But I just think that's super cute, you guys. Little, this is five by 12, but we're fitting those big transfers. This looks like a really big transfer compared to our little project, but look at how it fit on there. Like we got it all on there. So don't be afraid to move your, um, your stencils around on your projects so that you can get it fit exactly the way you want. Like I said, you're, you're the boss. You get to say what it's gonna do and what it's not gonna do. I love the little beads. I love the ratty little pieces of fabric. I may add some orange. I kind of like the yellow because it goes with the, the paints, but a gold would be pretty too. I hope you guys like it. Let's see what the winners are. Um, Essential Stencil should be posting some winners pretty quick here. And in the post where they congratulate the winners, I'll read the names off. They're also going to tell the winners where to email them with your mailing address and email address so they can send you a set of, set of stencils. Replay watchers, don't forget. They always choose a replay watcher. So make sure that if you're catching the replay, if we are no longer live, that you let us know that you caught the replay. Dana says, hi, Grace. It's been so long since I've gotten to watch your lives. I sure have missed your sweet face. Oh, that's so sweet, Dana. Thanks for being here and saying so. We got some winners. We got Gail Ripberger, Gail Ripberger, Roseanne Hayes, and Sandra Vest Songer. So it's Sandra, Roseanne, and Gail. You just want a set of stencils. Congratulations, ladies. You guys have a beautiful, blessed night. I'll be back next Thursday here on Essential Stencil. I hope you'll come on over to the Comfy Nest with Grace and join our craft community there. Follow and like the page, and um, I'll see you either there or here. Either way, hope to see you soon. Bye.